Now, I want to take you back to last Friday. On this program, we had a guest who said President Trump should end the congressional exemption from Obamacare. In other words, make Congress members and their staff pay like everybody else. The very next day, President Trump tweeted this. If a new health care bill is not approved quickly, bailouts for insurance companies and bailouts for members of Congress will end very soon. Okay, now look at this. The top Wall Street Journal editorial today. Obamacare for Congress. Trump can change a rule that exempts members from the pain, from the law's pain. Let's bring in the man who started all of this, <laughs> National Review columnist John Fund. Okay, you can take a victory lap if you like, but um, uh, do you think this is likely? Do you think the president is actually going to do this? Of course, everyone in Washington will say he shouldn't do it, but Donald Trump is probably the one person who doesn't listen to everyone in Washington, and he might just do this because it would bring Congress back into session very quickly, and they would have a new sense of purpose because it would be the members and their staffs who would be facing the crushing weight of Obamacare, which they, of course, cannot bear. That's a very cynical view of Congress, isn't it, John? No, it's human nature. You only do something when you have a deadline. This would make them, give them a deadline. This is your idea. Um, no. I, mean, I, I, I have to ask the question seriously. You threaten Congress with, uh, you're going to have to pay like everybody else. You're going to have to suffer the pain like everybody else. You really think that that is a big enough reason, a big enough threat, a big enough stick to beat them with, that they would actually do something, stay in D.C., and actually get something done. Think it would work? Stuart, there are two things that are being done right now that are illegal. The insurance subsidies that are being given through the exchanges, a federal judge, Rosemary Collier, has ruled those are unlawful. Therefore, they can't, the Obama administration was giving out those subsidies without force of law. Secondly, Congress, I have the proof right here, Congress filed for this exemption with the D.C. exchange for Obamacare, claiming it was a small business under 45 employees and that it was a state and local government. That's how they got the subsidy. It's right here. Judicial Watch filed a case uncovering this. Their case is now before the D.C. Court of Appeals. Congress has lied to the American people. It's committing a fraud. And regardless of whether or not it's a big enough stick, this cannot stand. They cannot get this through fraudulent means. And Senator Cassidy, I love Senator Cassidy, but his staff gave him bad information, maybe because they're worried about their subsidy. Uh, he was engaged in an alternate conceptualization of reality when he was on your show. Uh, yes, he was on the show earlier this morning. Um, we did talk about the, this, this very issue. So what's the next step, John? Where are we going from here? I think President Trump has to sit down with members of Congress and say, the American people expect you to do something. We expect some kind of a bill. I'm sitting here with two laws that don't have any force. They're not valid. The insurance subsidies have been declared invalid by a federal judge. And you lied, or somebody lied, to, uh, to, to the exchanges claiming that Congress is a small business, and that's why you get a subsidy for your members and your staff worth about $12,000 a year, or about 80% of their premiums every year. People on the exchanges aren't supposed to get contributions from their employers. This is a fraud on the American people, and the Congress, until it fixes it itself, should not do this. If they want to fix it, if they want to get rid of, keep their exemption, they could vote on it, but they don't have the political courage to do it. Well, that's fascinating, John. You really set the wheels in motion, didn't you? You're just a, a bomb thrower, that's what you are. Well, Independent Women's Voice is a group that's out there. People could look it up. They have all of the information on this, and they can, people can find out. Contact your member of Congress and say, either have the courage to vote yourself the exemption that doesn't apply to the American people, or stop breaking the law. Very strong case. That, that's, that's good stuff, John Fund. Thanks very much for being with us today. We appreciate it. See you soon.